If you think red flag gun confiscation is bad, imagine private bounties on gun owners across the United States. We're the armed attorneys. We're on a mission to make life for the law-abiding gun owner just a little bit easier by sharing fast and factual gun law information. Today we are talking a, about a controversial topic, SB8, the Texas Heartbeat Abortion Bill, but how it relates to the Second Amendment and all of our rights to keep and bear arms. Now, we have to enter this preface here that we are not commenting on abortion rights in this video. We're simply talking about the implications and how they affect us as law-abiding gun owners. But stick around to the end because we are going to give our kind of final prediction and we don't have crystal balls, but what we think the Supreme Court is going to do essentially with this bounty system we're going to be discussing. But before we begin, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting that like button. And to give us a little bit of background, mm -hmm. we're talking about Texas's SB8 from our 87th regular session. This is also known as the heartbeat bill. And essentially what that bill says is, after a fetal heartbeat is detected, or six weeks of gestation, whichever is earlier, um, that a abortion provider couldn't provide an abortion. And the way that they enforce it is through a private bounty system. Any private citizen could file a report against the clinic, somebody who aided the clinic, or the person seeking an abortion itself. And that was going to be the enforcement mechanism, essentially, to stop abortions in the state of Texas. Now, why are we talking about this? Because we're a Second Amendment channel. We talk about self-defense and firearms rights. How does it relate to us, Emily? Because, you know, it does have wide-reaching implications. It does. And this actually was brought up by the justices when SBA was heard a couple weeks ago now. Um, you know, it was the conservative justices, actually, who asked questions of the state of Texas to the effect of, you know, hey, Texas, if you let citizens enforce your law through the through the court system privately, um, and as we've seen, actually, through some of these lawsuits that have already arisen, not even citizens of Texas, you know, we've had citizens of other states enforce this law through the courts. If you let citizens do this for abortion, what is to stop? any state, let's say states that are leaned a little politically different from Texas, for using this for something that um, that is near and dear to their hearts, like restricting the Second Amendment. And that's exactly what we've seen happen now through the state of California. We've had Governor Newsom come out and say he very much intends to use this system that Texas is trying to create to enforce restrictive anti-gun laws, which is, I mean, it's exactly what the justices were were worried about. If you use it for one issue, who's to say you can't use it for any issue? Yeah. And if you think red flag gun confiscation is bad, imagine private bounties on gun owners across the United States, because that's essentially how Gavin Newsom has explained that he wants to use this, whether it's to go after someone who he doesn't want possessing firearms, certain firearms he doesn't want people possessing, or you know, transfers of certain firearms. He has put it all on the table and we're, uh, you know, afraid that this private bounty system could get expanded to or to other states as well. And so it kind of raises an issue that brings us to our attorney, attorney pro tip of the day of what do we think the Supreme Court is going to do? At the end of the day, I mean, we don't have crystal balls, but do you think they'll uphold this type of infringement, Emily? I don't. And of course, we have a very conservative Supreme Court, but I think they are looking to issues like firearms to say, you know, we can't let a law like this stand procedurally. Um, think about what it would do to the Second Amendment if any person could sue in violation of a very restrictive anti-gun law. I mean, if I'm a gun store, if I'm a mom and pop gun store, even if I'm a corporate gun store, I'm going to shut down all my outlets in California and say, it's too risky. I could get sued over and over and over again. Maybe there's, you know, statutory liquidated damages like there are in Texas. If, mm -hmm. if they're right and I violated the law, I'm out $10,000. If not, I'm out attorney's fees, which could be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on, you know, I mean, if I'm a big target for suit like a, like a gun store, I'm just going to shut down. If we shut down the gun stores, how do Californians exercise their Second Amendment rights? Yeah, you know? and, I, and I agree with Emily's assessment. I can't imagine our, our Supreme Court upholding such an infringement. You know, if it wouldn't be okay for the government to infringe on, you know, the Second Amendment, I don't see them saying, hey, this this application through private citizens would be okay. We know this is a controversial topic. We hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and tell us, tell us what you think about this, you know, topic in the comments section below and help us fight the anti-2A algorithm by sharing this video. And until next time, we're the Armed Attorneys.